Hello everyone, it's Religious Fanboy here again, and today we are discussing the Christian lessons and themes that are illustrated in episode 11 of Kino's Journey, The Beautiful World. I do have a disclaimer for the episode, and would... this episode contains heavy lessons and themes. Blood and scary images, especially if you don't have the best relationship with your parents. This might be a difficult ep. It might trigger things. So if, especially that last thing applies to you, I would understand and would recommend skipping the episodes. And, yeah, um, I do hope you stick around for this lesson video, but I also understand if the wounds are so especially fresh for you, you making the decision to skip this video, and if that is situation for you, May God be with you, I will pray for you, and I hope to see you next week as we cover the Christian lessons and themes in the last episode of Kino's Journey. And with that being said, I'm going to get to the passage of scripture for this week. Which comes from Proverbs and is from chapter 22 and it is verse 6, which says this, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. My first talking point is train up a child in the way he should go. This is, um, my first talk, the first topic is the importance of being a spiritual leader. This applies for being a parent, which life experience was, I can't necessarily relate to. Um, but it also relates to being someone in ministry, being a teacher, being a mentor in some way, shape, or form. Like, you are supposed to, as like a minister, as a Christian parent, you are to be godly, show God's love through your actions and the way you relate to your child. And it is your job. Like, you can't make your kids be, you can't force them to be Christians. But we. And this has been something that has led to people refuting and disagreeing with and finding it weird the ideas of child dedications as well as infant baptisms within the Catholic Church and other denominations that practice infant baptisms. But I don't see these things as wrong. Like it doesn't necessarily reflect on the faith of the children as much, like, that is something that they'll have to develop and come to their relationship with God is, your own relationship with God is your own. It's not your parents, it's not your grandparents, it's not your friends, it's yours. Um...
but I see those as good steps of parents choosing to baptize their kids when they grew up in the Catholic Church. I understand that. That's a way they practice being the spiritual leader of their house. And as they do what they feel is best for their child, which is them being a Christian and and being Catholic, and that involves baptizing them as a child. And same thing applies for child dedications. It's more of a wish and a hope and a prayer request that their child grows and develops a relationship with Christ. But it's also, and probably more importantly, accountability for the parents of them taking on the responsibility of being the spiritual leader of their house. The next talking point is your kids are not your clones and God does not want them to be. Um this this goes along mostly like this is the main where the main illustration comes from and that's in regards to the country of adult I will explain why I use the word air why I use the air quotes in adult when I talk about maturity in this aspect and in this talking point. And the first, and like this illustration is, in that country, they like took the kids' free will away and out of their fear of losing control of their country's current structure, they do this in order to force the children to take on the jobs of their parents. And this is what would have happened to Kino had she not refused. And we see probably one of the, yet the darkest image in this entire show in her parents' response and how this leads to the death of the original Kino. The traveler that, the person known as Kino that we've been following through this show had met as a child. And this, this message of this illustration illustrates my first talking, my first topic within this talking point is that God will eventually call you to surrender control of your kids. Which, as any good parent does not want to see their child fail, they want what's best for their child. But there's, especially in your Christian faith, and as far as your kids becoming Christians, there's only so much that you've been called to do, and only so much that you can do. Because, as I've said previously in this video, your faith is not your parents, it's not your grandparents, it's not your best friend, it's not your preachers. It's gonna have to be yours. 
And in order for someone to find their faith and have their, it's become a term that I learned in school at Greenville, was embedded theology. There's systemic theology and embedded theology. Systemic theology is, or traditional, I think it's called traditional theology. And that's what you were, at surface level, it's what was passed down to you. It's what you inherited from your parents, from your preacher, from your church. And then embodied, embedded theology is the, a goal that, a milestone that in order for our faith to be our own, in order to be strong, we have to make the transition from the faith that was passed down to us and inherited to the faith that was refined within us and within our walk with Christ. And being embedded theology. And that comes from discovery and comes from challenges and doubts and, and asking questions and pursuing answers. And it can only happen that way. I, you only, you will only know how strong your faith is once it is tested and you've gone through trials. That's the only way to assess it that on this earth. And as parents and mentors, we have to understand that, that there will be seasons of restlessness that, like you once had to face, your kids will have to face. And with the second part is going back to an idea we've talked about before. We've talked about a different passage that specifically says this from the New Testament, which references the church as a bond, one body made of different parts. God has a separate plan for all of us and different callings for all of us, right? Illustration is there are people that will feel called to go into the workforce, people that are, feel called and are equipped to go into Ministry in the form of, well, anything can be ministry, but specifically feeling called to teach and to preach. Like how in episode 10, we saw a girl willingly choose that she wanted to be a tour guide and she felt compassionate and wanted to take on her parents' job and would have thought to have done so if she hadn't, if her people hadn't been wiped out in episode 10. But we see Kino have, we find out that she had a very similar backstory, but she chose to be a traveler, both in the end of the episode for her safety, but because she desired that freedom. And we see throughout this episode and throughout the other travelers that we meet, how they've been able to, through their unique responsibilities and callings that come with being a traveler, have been able to do much good in the lives of those they meet and wouldn't have met otherwise had they not be travelers. <laughs> Which 
which that isn't always as Christians. We do have our faith, but we aren't called to, we need to remember to prioritize things properly, have our priorities in order. Our faith is important, and it should be like two most important commandments. Most important commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength with everything you have. And then second most commandment, most important commandment similar to it is love your neighbor as yourself. And this goes, your neighbor isn't just the uh, your other brothers and sisters in Christ. It's the Muslims that may or may not live close to you. It's the atheists. It's everyone around you is your neighbor. Christians do not have borders. It's anyone in the world that you are in contact with and live in any existence of time in proximity to is your neighbor. And we need to remember that to differ in certain things, like politically, your our political allegiances shouldn't be whether like on the topic of if you're Republican or Democrat shouldn't be directly tied to your faith. I don't think that personally as far as church's relation to politics go and how we vote, it should be we pray and use discernment and through doing prayer and discernment and being informed, we make the most God-honoring decision we can. And that is regardless of what political party it is, because as you can see, there is good and bad aspects of all political parties. And... Yeah, I kind of lost idea of what to conclude on. So I'm just gonna restate something that I've said multiple times in this video, because I think it's good to close it out. Your faith has to be your own, and the way that appears will be something that will develop itself through following God's plan and developing your relationship with God. And when, when our lives end, it will, when we go before God, we will not be judged by our parents' faith, our grandparents' faith, or any of our mentors' faith, but our own. And... With that being said, may God be with you, and I will see you next week. See you next time. Bye.